okay um with regard to whatever we've discussed any more questions or can we move on to the next chapter here we can move okay. we can move okay sure 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 all right so uh, we'll go ahead uh, so far we've seen the methods in which the enemy works and we also understand that um, these methods are somewhat common okay generally uses the same techniques uh, or on each generation so if we are aware we can have a guard against the enemy and be prepared right uh, if at all there is an attack and why are we so confident that even if the enemy comes against us in all these ways that we can overcome it is because of what the lord jesus has done on the cross of calvary so when we talk about believers authority the source of our authority is cross of the lord jesus christ so unless we understand about the cross really well and what the cross has accomplished for us our confidence you know will will not be on on uh, solid ground this is key for us to walk victorious the understanding of the victory that comes through the cross of the lord jesus christ so what did the lord jesus do on the cross he destroyed our enemy satan completely and he did a work we will get into it later redemptive work is to buy back something okay and in the context of our um uh, what has happened to a believer we know that a believer when they uh, acknowledge that the lord jesus you know is the son of god that um, he has paid the price for their forgiveness and you know eternal life and blessings and all of that what happens in those in moment that person becomes a child of god and in the spiritual realm they are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and i think i mentioned to you you know it's like moving from a certain citizenship to another citizenship so the dynamics changes okay about what this person is now eligible for the benefits that this person will enjoy in the kingdom of the lord jesus christ so that is redemption okay in in a nutshell because of redemption we have authority over the enemy so we we are saying that through the cross satan is defeated through the cross we have been redeemed and both of this is revealing that we are in a different place right, of great confidence that we can exercise our authority on the devil now let's look at a couple of passages you know, that show us um, to what extent satan has been defeated so can some i would need all of you to read different passages right now so if you can all get ready that will be good uh we will go through six passages and ideally six different people if you read it that will be nice uh so the first passage here is from genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 okay so could somebody please read that for us genesis 3:15 and then uh if you look in your notes you have the next passage from john 12 verses 31 to 33 so all of them need to be read in order so whoever has it ready can just jump in page number 30 genesis 3:15 mm -hmm. and i will put enmity between you and woman and between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you will strike his heel 
Okay, great. Thank you, John. Thank you for that. So this was spoken of early on. Okay, so the seed of the woman. Now, obviously, we understand that this was being referred to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, who will crush the head of the serpent? But we know that the serpent. you know is is satan himself and how did the lord jesus fulfill what was spoken in genesis 3:15 he crushed the devil satan on the cross okay what he uh done for us so it's like a prophetic it's like a messianic prophecy that you know the the seed of that woman will crush the head of the serpent and jesus has already done it through the cross so satan has been crushed okay or his head has been crushed so you can imagine you know how badly the enemy is defeated i sometimes feel that this one scripture itself is enough but you know you repeatedly see the message tree through other passages as well so let's read them all the next passage is john 12 verses 31 to 33 Can somebody please read that? Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said to this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Okay, thank you, Subhashish. So this is Jesus that he is going to die. on the cross and he is also adding and saying that the enemy satan will be driven out okay uh, or we could say he will be expelled or he was expelled and jesus said when i go on to the cross this is going to happen you know satan will be expelled where was he expelled from he is still on the earth isn't it he is moving around going about with his methods and his tactics and all so what is the meaning of expelled his position of authority okay the kind of authority that he had the grip that he had over the lives of the people he has been expelled from that position of authority quite clearly jesus said that that he is going to die and when he accomplishes you know this this work on the cross that satan will be dethroned from his authority okay so it's quite clear for us now let's move on john chapter 16 verses 8 through 11 another person john 16 verses 8 through 11 Uh, John chapter sixteen verse eight to eleven. When yeah. he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the Prince of this world now stands condemned. Okay, thank you, John. So, Prince of this world, another title given to Satan, stands what? condemned okay so on the cross what did the lord jesus do satan was condemned so he's already been judged right condemned is more like a legal term in or terminology where um somebody has been confirmed to be wrong and you know they they are now punishable so satan has already been condemned Okay, so that is what Jesus is saying. So through the cross, this has already been done. Colossians two verses fourteen through fifteen. Zeli, are you able to read it? Yes, sure, Pastor. Yeah, please go ahead. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sally. So I'll go from the back. Okay, it says triumphing over them in it. It is what? Cross. Okay, or through it, which is the cross. Triumphing through the cross over them is Satan. And you saw the list, you know, principalities, powers of darkness. So Jesus has triumphed. Okay. Another thing you see there is he has disarmed, it says, you no know, principalities, powers of darkness. So disarmed simply means you have an enemy, okay, who is uh, notorious, who is, um, uh, you know, kind of very, they carry lethal weapons against us. But when you take away all those weapons, you know, and they are defeated. They are now your prisoners. They're no longer harmful to us, right? Or in other words, they could be harmful, but we are protected. Okay, we are um, uh, stronger than them now because they are disarmed. And that is what we see the cross doing for us. It has disarmed principalities and powers and we see that uh, Jesus made a public spectacle of the enemy. Okay, this is another thing for us to understand. When you go back to uh, the era where there were kings and they had their enemy kings, they'll go to war. And if one king um, wins the battle, they would do something like a, you know, like a public uh, procession. They will carry whatever they have got from the enemy, the gold and the silver and the cattle and everything, basically for display that I am the winner here. And, you know, they would go on this very uh, grand uh, procession. So that is public spectacle. So what we are being told here, when Paul writes to the Colossians, that's what he's saying. You know what? Jesus has won a grand victory on the cross. He has disarmed principalities and powers. So he's trying to tell them, do you understand what kind of a victory we have through what the Lord Jesus has done for us? So it's a grand victory and the enemy is disarmed. Let's go on to the next passage here. Hebrews 2 verses 14 through 15. Hebrews 2 chapter 2 verse yeah. 14 to 15. Yeah. For as much then as the children are particles of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fears of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Amen. Okay, so another term here that is used um, as a condition of the, the devil now is destroyed. Okay. So the Lord Jesus, and then that passage also talks about how he became a man, right? Why did he have to do that? To fulfill the requirement for that perfect sacrifice. That's why God had to become a man so that the enemy could be destroyed. Okay. So another thing here, you no, know, so far we've seen Satan was crushed. He was dethroned or expelled, condemned, disarmed. Now add another thing to it, destroyed. Okay, So he has been destroyed through the cross. Now Matthew 28 and verse 18 would be the next passage. Yeah, another person, please. Somebody new who has not read so far.
Um, hi guys, uh, Pastor has a small network issue. She will connect back. Please hold on. Thank you. Okay, noted. <clears throat>
Okay, I hope you all can hear me. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, it's strangely like I have two internet connections and both were not working. So somehow, I uh, anyway, I kind of managed to get in through the phone. So don't worry about it. We can still finish our portions for today. I'm sorry about that delay in connectivity, though. Uh, all right. So we were reading the passage, um, you know, about uh, the cross. So which passage were we at just now? Hebrews? Yeah, we finished Hebrews. So Matthew 28 and verse 18. If one of you can read it, that would be great. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. So you see here that the Lord Jesus is, is confirming. And this is after the work on the cross, right? He's confirming uh, and, and saying what? He's saying all authority, all authority on heaven and, and earth belongs to whom? Belongs to him, right? So then just simple mathematics, isn't it? How much of, if all authority belongs to the Lord Jesus, how much authority belongs to Satan? None. Yeah, exactly. So nothing at all. So can we say that Satan is powerless? Okay. So far we said that he is crushed. He has been expelled. He has been condemned, disarmed, destroyed, and also powerless. Okay. So because he has been made powerless, you now we as the children of God. You know, we understand that we are in a position of victory. We are in a position of authority. Okay, and um, uh, really, the work of Jesus is complete. We don't have to look for another person to come and uh, add to what the Lord Jesus has done, or we don't have to fear that there will be somebody who will subtract from what Jesus has already done. Isn't it? So that gives us great confidence in the work of the cross. And we have to understand that, uh, you know, uh, we are truly victorious. Okay. Now, let's continue. We are uh, going to just examine this victory through the cross. And um, we are also told, right, that we have dominion on all the powers of the enemy. So Luke 10 and verse 19, another person, could you kindly read this uh, passage for us? Luke 10 and 19. OK, uh, who can quickly read it? Hi. I have given yeah, you sure, authority sure. to trample on snakes and scorpions mm -hmm. and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm okay. you. Yeah, great. Thank you, Subhashish. So once again, you know, again, you find this commissioning of the disciples happening before the cross. And you see the ministry of Jesus, sometimes there is what we call as the foretaste of the cross. So even as a foretaste of the cross, you find the Lord Jesus giving his disciples mastery and dominion over the enemy. So how much more after the cross? So we as God's people, you know, we have to understand the nature of authority that we carry. So now that we carry this authority, you know, what, what are we supposed to do? Anyone, any thoughts on that? Now that, you know, the Lord Jesus has given us that authority, what are we expected to do with it? We walk in that authority, exercise the authority. Okay, how, how, how do we do that? Heal the sick, cast out demons. Okay, 
so you are expressing you are uh, releasing your authority over sickness over demonic powers yeah that's good that's good how else how else can you exercise the authority i think we can that's use this to to resist the influence of the the kingdom of darkness correct correct so we can use it to resist okay we can use it to resist its uh, influence great so these are all ways in which what you you are telling me now like what john said and what uh, brother isaac said is all enforcing the victory we already have it and there are different ways in which we can enforce this uh, victory or as you know john said walk in that authority okay so again we could also talk about things like uh, commanding uh, declaring with the word uh, you know the the word of god in in our mouth we can also talk about binding and loosing right for as per the purposes of god so things like this will help us enforce the victory which we have already won through the cross of the lord jesus christ so we have to understand that as long as we are here on the earth right this is our uh, this is what we are expected to do you know just go ahead and enforce your victory we don't have to purchase that victory anymore it has already been done for us through the cross of the lord jesus christ now let's add a few more uh, thoughts that will help us completely uh, walk in this truth we have complete protection okay so we have complete protection from uh, satan because a lot of people wonder we have the authority yes but what if we start to walk in this authority you know is there um, some sort of a danger to us as believers but there are so many scriptures that state that we are already protected you know just now subhashish read he read and he said that um, uh, nothing by any means shall harm you okay and uh, 1 john 5:18 it says that um, uh if if uh, we don't sin then the enemy cannot touch us okay the enemy cannot touch us then we also read that no weapon formed against us shall prosper but you know we are the ones who will in fact uh, condemn the enemy and uh, again you know the angel of the lord and camps around those who fear him and deliver delivers them and there is psalm 91 you know, that talks about us uh, living under the protection of god so you know there are uh, various times that god has confirmed and reconfirmed to us that not only do we have victory but we also have protection from the work of the evil one so that gives us so much confidence you know in in god that we can stand boldly against the enemy we don't have to be afraid you know, some people know that the cross has given us the victory but there is the fear what if the enemy does this and that we don't have to fear because we have the authority but we also have the protection of god okay um all right so any any thoughts right now or any questions at this point or are you convinced that the lord jesus has won our complete victory if you are convinced maybe i can hear an amen at least class okay yes yes yeah very convinced yes amen okay all that is happening on the chat so that's wonderful uh great yeah okay great so we are all convinced of that uh i'm just trying to reconnect back through my computer because my net connection is back
okay uh, i'll join you through the other connection there thank you Okay, so we are quite clear um, about the victory of the cross. Now, I'm uh, just going to add a couple of, um, you know, other thoughts to this aspect of us having the victory and also having the protection. Why are we discussing these things? See, when it comes to uh, practically engaging, against the enemy though we know that jesus has died on the cross and given us the victory you know believers tend to have some doubts which stop them so uh, we don't want to have any fear or doubts we want to be very clear that you know we uh, can go ahead and enforce this victory that god has given us so you know one thing is believers fear that um, still there is there is some access that satan has from where he can keep attacking them or harming them but you know we just now clarified that we also have god's protection right against uh, the the works of darkness so that is clear now sometimes believers have this this kind of a question uh, recently, there is a teaching called as the Courts of Heaven. I don't know how many of you have come across that teaching. But in that, what is said is, um, yes, Jesus has won the victory for us. But since he is an intercessor in heaven right now, uh, the setting is more like a court. Okay, So where we have to approach the court of heaven, where Jesus is the advocate and, and the judge. And when we are fighting against Satan, you know, he will judge. He will, uh, he will declare us uh, innocent and uh, Satan will be condemned in the courts of heaven. So each time we have to go in prayer and, you know, we have to uh, have Jesus fight that case like a lawyer and then he will give us the victory. But the, the problem with that is, you know, when we study in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 9.14, we are told that the Lord Jesus has already perfected us you know, once and for all. Because he became that perfect sacrifice that was required on the cross. And therefore, the work of God has already been done. Yes, he is the advocate. Yes, he is the apostle of our confession. Yes, he is the high priest who has engaged in um, intercession in heaven, right? But that kind of, um, you know, intercession starts from a place where Jesus has already completed, you know, uh, redeeming us. He's already completed paying the price. He's already completed condemning the devil so there is no more requirement for another case in the courts of heaven where we have to go fight the case and jesus acts as our advocate and all that so it's not required all right so uh, what we are saying is though there is such a such a concept among certain believers scripturally if you look at it in heaven, Jesus has completed every, you know, all your cases, everything. And he's there. He no longer needs to fight another case. Okay. So uh, that is what we are saying. Now, we can also, you know, sometimes believers have this uh, issue. 
they feel no but satan still has uh, some uh, legal rights you know, to do what he's doing to cause sickness or to cause some sort of a disruption in our lives and they fear they fear that but you know when we study about the work of redemption through the cross okay so when you go and study about that we will understand that redemption means you've literally been translated into another kingdom okay uh, and thereby like and the picture is like how moses brought the people of children of israel out of egypt okay so from slavery out of bondage into freedom from being slaves to being sons from not having anything to now being blessed you know as the children of abraham as the um, uh, as as the children of god the blessings of the cross so when we say that we are redeemed legally because now you are a part of another kingdom god has rights on us satan has lost all his legal rights on us because we belong to another kingdom so even you know, we use the term legal rights satan no more has legal rights on us because we now are redeemed so even in that sense you know there is no access which he has unless we give the access to the devil now how can access happen again we will study that uh, later but you know when i keep sinning when i keep disobeying the promptings of the holy spirit or what the word of god is instructing me what happens i open the door right that is access and then satan is able to do things in in people's in believers lives okay however originally he has no more legal rights okay so here is the other uh challenge for believers we've understood that jesus has one complete victory over the devil but believers worry uh now what if satan retaliates okay uh what if satan gets angry with us you know how the enemy gets angry when um, you're doing something against them so what if there's a backlash you know i go i cast out a demon then maybe in my home there will be a fight or there will be some you know some theft or something that satan will do to say you did something to me now watch what i'm going to do to you you know believers have that kind of fear but based on whatever we've discussed so far in all the scriptures we read satan is completely defeated he is disarmed and we are protected nothing by any means shall harm you so why are we fearing this retaliation why are we fearing this backlash you know we are completely protected okay however when people fear okay such things uh there is also you know a scripture which says like job said this he said what i have feared has come upon me so sometimes you know when we agree with the enemy those things begin to happen you know because there is another dynamic in play there we are believing we are putting our faith in fear you know we are we we give access to the enemy in that way okay so backlashes a believer who's walking with the lord strong walking strong with the lord and uh, you know he he is strong in the word uh, and yielding to the holy spirit such a believer need not worry about any kind of you know backlashes so you can confidently exercise your authority against the powers of darkness okay so that's another clarity that we want to uh, bring in here so the last clarity Uh, is with regard to the statement i don't know how many of you have heard it but uh, people generally say you know higher levels higher devils okay and i have also heard people say new level new devil okay so it simply means that as god leads us into greater things uh, what happens is you will find i mean they think that there will be a 
a new attack from the devil or a bigger attack you know when let's say you are a believer and then suddenly um, god opens up doors uh, for you and you become a leader in the church so people would say oh when you were uh, a volunteer believer that time you know all these attacks were not happening but now that you have become a leader you are an, at another level there are new devils that you are facing there are larger attacks and all that but again you know if you go back to scripture you know you say new level or every higher level you know you have a higher devil but you see what god's word says is we are seated with christ in the heavenly places okay so who is at the highest place right now you know the lord jesus and where is our position spiritually we are also placed in the highest position right in christ jesus we have been seated in the heavenly places in christ jesus so why this fear of some higher devil coming and attacking us okay so you see there are different thought processes and concepts and philosophies that people have that brings in fear but if you examine the scriptures it's quite clear that the cross has won the victory complete victory in fact jesus has given us you know that complete authority and we are also protected so if we meditate on god's word and this becomes a reality in our hearts in our minds you know we are able to walk victorious as believers we are able to exercise our authority okay so this these are some of the key things that uh, we wanted to discuss from this chapter uh, any if you have any more questions or you know you know of uh, certain conceptions you know misconceptions that people have we could discuss about that then can i ask a question yeah sure okay like i heard a teaching that you know um as we are wrestling against the principalities and all those things higher level just like you say you know yeah. if we are not on guard you know the attack will come upon us so something like that i heard so i was fair uh, i was fearful most of the time you know oh my god like i'm not ready spiritually so i shouldn't wrestle against all those principalities and high authorities but as uh, uh, you were sharing i mean uh, all my doubts have been cleared and i'm so thankful to you and so if you can put more insight on this i would really appreciate that yeah sure sure zeli uh, thank you for that very honest question there uh, see people do say that you know the the more deeper you get um, uh and you go against the devil the devil might try to attack you in a more severe way but you know the fact is that when his kingdom is getting uh, an assault from us obviously he will try to he he will do his best isn't it to stop us so as a believer you know it's a given it's a given that satan will do everything possible everything uh, you know uh, up his sleeves he will do it so for a believer you just you just continue to submit to the lord we will come to the section where we talk about overcomers lifestyle uh you know how how you can live victorious i think zeli as long as you're maintaining that lifestyle before the lord and you're submitted to the lord you don't have to give in to these things that people say because there's no biblical evidence to that yeah uh it clarifies my doubt thank you sure sure yeah yeah but if people start i told you no 
job said um, like whatever i feared has come upon me many people who engage in prayer intercession spiritual warfare they believe you know that oh something might happen so if you believe it you're empowering it and it happens yeah really good question there um yeah how about the others are you do you know of uh, some challenges that people may have to exercising their authority yes can i can i share it yeah yes brother i said go ahead yes so just like uh, zeli was saying how can we um help or i mean Uh, strengthen some believers actually according, according to all what we have discussed or what you, what you have discussed authorities have been given to us but well, some are either hesitant to operate in their authority either fear or lack of proper knowledge and some of we are all within the same community or in the church how can we help them so that they can be more grounded in their authority like i'm saying in healing and deliverance some can only some don't think or believe that they have the authority when something happens they always say let's wait for the pastor or let the pastor come instead of them trying to start in that offering prayer and what not so how can we help those people <laughs> to operate yeah. properly in their authority <laughs> thank yeah. you yeah good good very good the question brother so uh, see one you answered your own question you said you how can we like uh, teach them you said so one way is you teach them okay and you you also said uh, like you know because of ignorance people are not aware of the authority that they carry so once you bring this teaching there will be uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so when you preach the word clearly then people will develop faith about that matter so that is one thing second very practical thing which we can do is we can also help them uh, uh, to exercise this authority okay in different ways now uh, i'll just give the example of deliverance i, I remember we we uh, have opportunities here at church uh, where you know we can pray for others and all and when you pray sometimes people manifest and sometimes you know you you discern uh, demon spirits and all but because you are serving uh, in church uh, you get an opportunity to exercise that authority i remember on a mission trip in fact uh, in our, from our church we had gone and uh, this was uh, Uh, in uh, delhi i'm taking a little extra time since is the last class those of you who really have to leave please feel free you can log off the class no problem but i'll share some more so this was in delhi and we had gone for a mission trip so after a session so many people started manifesting in the crowd okay and we're talking about a huge crowd here so the sessions needed to go on so what they decided the organizers they said look um, Uh, we will continue with the next session those who need deliverance there was some space you know like backstage so they said you start bringing them backstage one by one and uh, a team will be available to uh, cast them out so uh, a pastor was with us pastor ashish she said okay come our team you know let our team minister we were all like what are you saying you know we we'll go and do this deliverance is it so we all went and uh, because there were different different people who were manifesting everyone was engaged in praying over such people and i was caught up uh, i was with uh, two other guys from church uh, from youth and um, so we have this lady in front of us and she's manifesting and all of us we are telling each other you you do it you do it you do it you know so we were so we we know scripturally we know we have the authority and all but the opportunity to really minister and for a long time pastor never came near us so we were like we need help and then because we were there and we were stuck 
so to say uh we said you know what okay let's just do it we'll pray and whatever we had learned you know in the name of jesus come out i cast you out in the name of you know trying different commands so we sometimes these opportunities need to be there um uh, isaac and you know you can create it for your own teams uh you can ask them okay you pray you pray for people uh or even in the family right like children you could just tell them uh, okay you pray something is happening you have to take authority over it uh you can tell them okay come let's pray let's see uh this is happening you command you command healing in the name of jesus so what when you also practically lead people into it that's my point okay and i remember that day uh, being in delhi with those those uh, guys we were at it you know in the in a few minutes we were at it and we were trying to figure out you know why is the spirit not coming out and then you know we were ministering to another person so it was just that initial inhibition which we had but once we started we were over our inhibition and i remember about myself you know uh, went on several other mission trips and you know there are places where we go to uh, some places in one particular place so many people were manifesting that even ministering the word had become hard because people were manifesting and you had to go and you know do something about it and during holy spirit baptism we saw so many were manifesting so it was like a line one by one one by one people were coming we were casting out demons casting out demons okay it had become like okay next 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 you know and uh, as i think about you know that that kind of confidence i think it's because of all those times when uh you know leaders and others they kind of showed us and also kind of led us in that direction and even pushed us into it so when we recognize that oh yeah actually you know look at these demons uh, the way the uh, disciples came back to jesus and said uh, even like the demons are responding even the demons uh, are responding to us we were amazed i was amazed oh yeah actually when you say the name of jesus they are listening they are leaving the people you know the torment is being broken so in practical ways i think we must also lead people in that direction then they will also recognize ha ah, yes i have the authority okay so i just wanted to add that uh, brother isaac and i hope it helps thank you very much yeah thank you god bless you man yeah sure sure it, uh, it, it feels like so like the, the question of jesus and his disciples yes and they ask they ask him why are we not able to do it jesus mm-hmm. says because you you don't believe in yourself <laughs> thank mm-hmm. you god bless you nice weekend man oh, to everybody yeah. Thank you thank you for that Isaac. So uh yeah everyone so that's good and I just encourage us you know time to time keep going back meditate keep meditating you know on these passages Jesus has won the victory he has destroyed the devil the more we meditate you know that that word the power of that word you know takes over within us and uh, you know that we are able to release that authority in an easier way Okay so let me stop with uh, those thoughts uh maybe zeli zeli could you close uh, close in prayer okay sure pastor yeah thank you so much lord for this uh, wonderful session that we had lord wonderful uh, lord we thank you for the wonderful truth that we have done through your word and through your uh, daughter lord uh, our pastor nancy lord lord you continue to use her mightily lord for your kingdom lord and also lord whatever truth that we have learned lord help us to lord practice that and holy spirit continue to minister to each one of our hearts lord lord i pray that your peace will which suppresses all understanding we got our hearts lord as we uh, leave this place lord in jesus mighty name amen 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 so thank you everyone Uh, god bless you have a great weekend and uh, i'll see you again uh, in the next class